Do you want to learn how to do picture in picture within Premiere Pro or picture in picture within Premiere Pro or picture in picture within Premiere Pro? If you savvy those last three ways that I just showed you how to do picture in picture within Premiere Pro, well, this tutorial is about picture in picture within Premiere Pro. Let's get right into it. Oh, by the way, hit that subscribe button. I love you. We have our clip here of me and you say, wow, look at this nice negative space of trees where we can put a picture in picture. What should I be talking about with these trees? How about Nintendo 64? Now, if I click this top Nintendo 64 clip and hit Shift-5 or go to Window, Effects Controls, which is Shift-5, I can click and grab on the scale and move that to the left and scale it down. If you click Motion, this will allow you to grab the clip and move it to wherever your heart desires. But let's say we wanted to add more clips to that one clip. Let's say we wanted to talk about Oh, I don't know, Super Nintendo. So I'm gonna bring that Super Nintendo clip in, and then, you know what? It would be awesome to talk about normal Nintendo or the original Nintendo system at the same time. Now I have my Nintendo 64 clip right here, but I want to, instead of having to do that action every single time with all of these clips, all I have to do, right click, go to copy, highlight your other clips, right click, and click paste attributes. And we want to paste motion attributes. You could essentially paste the audio attributes, but I'm not really, I'm gonna be getting rid of the audio, so I'm not really gonna do that. But right here is motion. You could do opacity and time remapping, but I'm going to paste my motion attributes to every single one of these clips. So hit okay. Now, instead of having to go through and do that with every single clip, now it looks like I'm talking about these things. Isn't that neat? If you wanna make this look even cooler, what you could do is highlight all your clips and I'm going to move them up one, hold down on the pen tool, grab the rectangle tool. Maybe you could just draw a border if you wanted to. Move this border underneath. This shape layer, I'm going to kind of center it. Neato gang, you want to change the color of that? Let's say we want it to be black. Kind of like the white, black's neat too. You know what, still gonna go with white. If you wanted to get even snazzier, you could highlight these clips, right click, hit nest. Be like, sure, I'll nest that. Hit Shift-7 to go to your effects, or you could go to Window and Effects, but as you can see, it says Shift-7 there. Then I'm gonna click and do something like Drop Shadow. So drag that onto my nested clip. Hit Shift-5 to go back to your effects controls, and now we can have a little drop shadow on there. Isn't that neato? Now we can make it a little bit bigger. And look at how cool me talking about video game consoles when I'm not really talking about video game consoles here on the screen. Next will be a side-by-side -side picture in picture. In, in order to do this, I have another clip right here and underneath is the same clip of me, but we wanna do a side-by-side -side split. So right here, I can tell that I'm kinda in frame, I'm gonna scale myself up and I know I want myself to be over to the right. I'm gonna hit Shift-7 to bring up my effects controls and type in something called Crop. Drag that onto my clip on the top. And now I go from the left. And if you want to know where the center is, I'm gonna turn on Safe Margins. If you don't know where that Safe Margins button is, you can bring that up right here in your button editor and drag it on. And as you can see right here, it's marking the middle for me. So on this one, I'm gonna go a little over to the left and hey, there's me. Now on this bottom one, I'm going to use my position to move myself over a little bit. Maybe I'll scale myself up so you can see two of me. Two Javier's talking to you at the same time. Oh, looks like I go out of frame. but. As you can see, there's two of me talking to you at the same time. That's how you would pull this off. If you wanna make this look a little bit neater, again, go to the little square rectangle tool right here and click and drag on your screen and make a little rectangle like this. So I'm gonna move mine up a little bit. Now we have a little border where I could talk to myself if I really wanted to. And yay, there you have side by side. You could do this with something like a Skype call or whatever. When you're talking to somebody uh, via the internet, this is a good way to set that up. So it takes up the whole screen. When you're doing picture in picture, let's say you wanted to do something really cool. Instead of using squares, let's say you wanted to do something like a circle. In order to do that, click and hold on your little pen tool, rectangle, whatever ellipse tool, whatever it is right there, click and hold so you can bring this up. And I'm gonna go to the ellipse. 
Now I'm going to click and drag on the screen and hold shift so it makes a perfect circle. Expand it the whole clip. Hit shift seven to go to your effects tab. We're gonna look up track mat. Track mat, boom. What you'll need to do at this point is move everything up one so you have a blank layer right here. What we're gonna be doing is essentially creating a hole in the video. After we move it up, we're gonna click our clip underneath that graphic, go to mat, and because this graphic is on video three, I'm going to hit video three, and uh-oh, looks like it's only doing what this circle. So we're going to hit reverse. Now I can bring in the Nintendo clips over here. We're gonna scale it down and move it over into place. I'm just gonna delete my audio here for these clips. Highlight my first clip. I'm just gonna hit Command C or Control C on Windows. Go to these two clips, right click, paste attributes. Paste the motion, boom. As I move along in this clip, you can see the Nintendo things there in the corner. The best part about doing your picture-in-picture -picture graphics with a track mat, now I can manipulate the file underneath and move it however I want to. So even if this wasn't a circle, it, say it was a square or any other kind of thing, underneath that I can manipulate this without having to do a whole bunch of extra work. With other ways of doing picture-in-picture, -picture, if you were to move anything, you'd have to change your cropping and all that type of stuff. So that's what I really like about this. And what about that border that I did with the first example? Well, it's even easier to do in this instance. Check this out. So this graphic that I'm using as the mat, I'm gonna hold option, click and drag one up. Now I have, now I have that white circle duplicated. Click on that top graphic, undo the fill, and then click on your stroke. And now within the parameter right here, you can make the, uh, the border as big as you want. So again, you, if you wanted to change the color to whatever, you could do that right there. I'm gonna stick with white because white looks cool. And now you can look at two of me. What's great about this technique is say, ah, you know, I'm not really feeling the circle. So then delete the circle, go back in here and let's do a, let's do a rectangle, you know? So now we draw a rectangle, bring this rectangle into the layer where the mat is supposed to be and do it that way. I'm gonna delete this. There you go, now it's back to a rectangle. But the great thing is, you can move your file wherever you want to and really frame it up how you want right there. And let's say I don't want that, let's say I want something like, click the shape, and I wanna make it more like a square, you can make it more like a square. And there you have it. And now you don't have to copy and paste attributes and do all that stuff. It's all taken care of for you. That's why I like to use track mats for picture in picture as opposed to any of those other ways. If you just want to scale down the picture and put it in the corner like I did in the very beginning, go ahead and do that. But if you make a template for a track mat, then it makes your life that much easier anytime you need to do a picture in picture. If this was helpful, my only fee that I ask is that you share it with somebody else and maybe go watch another video of mine because all that watch time helps me out on this channel. Special bonus because you watched eight minutes and 30 seconds of a tutorial of me talking about picture in picture in Premiere Pro, which could probably be pared down to about like 30 seconds of a tutorial. So here's me trying to make the intro to this video about like 18,000 times, maybe, maybe a million times, maybe just 18,000 times. Here we go. Are you ready for some picture in picture? Or picture in picture? Or picture in picture? Or picture in picture within Premiere Pro? Huh? Huh? Are you? Are you ready for that? You wanna get picture in picture over the side? You wanna get picture in picture with side by side? You wanna get picture in picture with a circle? Or like a square? Or like a, a zigzag pattern? Whatever you want, I got it. Picture in picture within Premiere Pro. Are you ready? Cause yeah! Picture in picture within Premiere Pro. Picture in picture within Premiere Pro. Picture in picture within Premiere Pro. Adobe Premiere Pro. Picture in picture. My name's Javier Mercedes, and I'm gonna try and do the splits while I explain what's in this video. I'm gonna be doing picture in picture within Premiere Pro, and that's as far as I can do the splits. So if you want to learn how to do if you want to learn how to do picture in picture within Premiere Pro, without getting a groin injury. Let's do this the tutorial. Oh my gosh, this hurts. Let me tell you something. Picture in picture within Premiere Pro. That's the tutorial for today. Yeah, my name's Javier Mercedes, and I like doing video editing tutorials and speaking without taking a breath. So let's hit that subscribe button and...
start the tutorial. Till next video, live a life of abundance. I'll see you guys next time.